to the cloud. All right, welcome. Thanks everybody. Thank you for being flexible um, with our time and our day. Uh, we usually have these meetings on Sundays and I appreciate that you are flexy to have the meeting today because we're gonna get a Spanish lesson from my good friend, Anna Miller. Yay! Anna is actually the new camp director at Camp Amahami, located in Deposit, New York. Um, and Anna speaks fluent Spanish, so I'm super excited to have her here tonight. Uh, we were joking because the, the the Spanish that I know and love is comes in the form of a song about pollitos. <laughs> which I may sing for you a little bit later. Um, but welcome to Anna. I can see that we have, all of our chaperones are here, our group leaders as well. So Adrian um, is over there on my computer. I don't know where she is on yours, but Adrian is here, Amy, Holly, Mandy, and Serafina. So we are your intrepid group leaders um, for this trip. So it's nice to have us all here and on camera. If you want to turn your camera on and hang out, I think Anna's got some interactive stuff to do um, and to teach us. And if you already speak Spanish, that's wonderful because this will just be a nice refresher for you um, so that we can make sure we know some pretty good phrases for when we travel. Because we all know that when we go out into the world, um, you know, people don't just speak English. <laughs> they speak lots of other languages. And if we can interact with people in their own language, um, it shows a good sign of respect for where we're going. So, Anna, can I turn it over to you and take it away? Hola. Hola. <laughs> All right. Buenos, bueno, bueno, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Um, so, as Liz said, my name's Anna. Um, I actually come from a Spanish teaching background, so I'm super excited to be here with you all. Um, so I think what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some Ecuador trivia, and then mm -hmm. we're going to do a little bit of Espanol, some like travel phrases, going to try to make it super fun. But while I'll, um, before we hop into that, I'm always curious, kind of just, you can give a raise of a hand, uh, who has taken any Spanish classes? I'm seeing some hands. I see one hand. I see two hands. I see two and a half hands. I see 3.5 hands. Excellent. <laughs> Four hands. All right. Beautiful. All right. So we've got un poco de español. All right. Muy bien. Okay. So let me pull up this um, trivia. Um, it is in, in English. I, I thought I'd start easy on you and just we do some um, English, <laughs> some trivia in English. Um, get you all excited about your trip to Ecuador. So I'm going to see if I can be not technologically challenged. All right. How are we doing? Can we all see this? All right. Awesome. Okay. I love a shout out moment, but I also know that Zoom is sometimes not a great way for that to happen. So what we're going to do is, um, we are going to just kind of, if you want to send in the chat your vote, um, so we'll do number one, put it in the chat or shout out if you're feeling brave. We love a we love an unmute moment. Um, so number one, the capital of Ecuador. Your options are Quito, Cuenca, Guayaquil, and La Mitad. Well, the real question is, all right, Serafina's in the chat. Serafina's in the chat. She put in Quito. I'm seeing Quito. <laughs> I'm seeing three Quitos, four Quitos. Um, the only city I recognize. <laughs> <laughs> all right, solid. All right, we've got a general consensus about Quito. Muy bien, muy bien. The answer is, in fact, Quito. All right, but Cuenca and Guayaquil and La Mitad are also all towns and cities in Ecuador. Um, so actually, interestingly enough, this one, La Mitad, La Mitad, whoosh, literally means the half. So you can find that point on the equator. All right, so we're going to go with Quito. All right, excellent. Okay, number two, Ecuador owns the Galapagos Islands. True or false? I'm going to choose the answer that gets the most responses so you can shout it out. All right, we got one false. 
Too true. Liz is just stirring things up. All right, I got two false, three true. All right, verdad, verdad. All right, I'm getting the sense that we all think that Ecuador owns the Galapagos Islands, so we're going to go with true. We'll see. All right, well done. And that's especially important because that is where y'all are going. Okay, so looking at mainland Ecuador, we have three geographical regions. Um, we have the costa. So those of you who are familiar with Costa Rica, costa is our Spanish word for coast. We have the Sierra, which is the highlands. Can anyone tell me what some Sierras are in the United States? You can put it in the chat or you can be brave and shout it out. If you've heard of anywhere in the, oh, Mandy, our trip leader pulling through for us. Yeah, so the Sierra Nevada um, mountains literally mean the snowy highlands or like the snowy, um, yeah, the Sierra Madres. Yeah, also nice. Okay, so we have three regions. We have the Costa, the Sierra, and what other region do you think we have geographically speaking in Ecuador? This question's a little bit of an easy one. We have La Jungla, Andalucía, El Porvenir, or El Oriente. So go ahead, put your votes in the chat. What do you think it is? La, all right, Serafina's putting in a vote for La Jungla. La Jungla from Sofia. Amy's saying La Jungla. Nice. All right, I think we're all feeling very confident about the jungla. All right, and now you know how to say three different things in Spanish, and so that's also pretty good. I'm getting sadder about my Spanish pronunciation by the minute here. <laughs> you got this, Liz, you got this. Yep, so that J sound is always going to be a huh, like huh, la jungla, la jungla. Yeah. All right. I'm sad about it. <laughs> That's why we're all here, Serafina. We're here to learn. Okay, number four, you can visit a monument marking the equator in Ecuador. True or false? I see a thumbs up. We can do a thumbs up for true. True, true. Yeah. Awesome. So knowing that, what do you think Ecuador might mean in Spanish? Take a wild guess, team. Equator. Yeah. Nice. So there you go. Now you know where the name comes from. Okay. Number... Five, what is the town of Papayacta famous for? So that double L is going to give us a Y sound. A couple options, the tallest mountain in Ecuador, natural hot springs, sheep farms, or marketplaces. I'm going to give you all a hint on this one because um, we're going to narrow it down to the tallest mountain in Ecuador or natural hot springs. <laughs> Sorry, Liz. <laughs> Ooh, you guys voted sheep too soon. All right, hot springs. Got two votes for hot springs. I'm seeing some nodding for hot springs. All right, let's check it out. Nice. So we got some natural hot springs in there. Papayakta. Papayakta. Okay, number six. And this is going to be really important. So this is why I wanted to start with culture because I think um, part of language is culture. Um, so I wanted you to have like a really good understanding of what you're getting yourselves into, or at least a beginning understanding. So number six, haggling or like bartering is a traditional and cultural practice in native markets. True or false? Seeing some head nodding, seeing some thumbs up. Yeah, true. Awesome. So we're going to, we might need to work on some of those numeros so we feel really confident in our uh, purchasing and haggling. 
My dad must be from Ecuador. <laughs> nice. All right. Mm. We're going to skip number seven because that's not really important. Okay. Uh, number eight, in Ecuador, it's rude to show up late to a social gathering and guests thus often arrive early or precisely on time. <laughs> seeing a thumbs down from Liz. I'm seeing some trues. True, true, true. I've got four trues. Liz, you've been outvoted. Oh. All right, so we're going to put true just so you can see what happens. Um, just so you can see what's true, but the answer is actually going to be false. The Liz followed through. So um, often in um, South America, you're going to hear the phrase like tiempo Latino, which I'll put in your chat. <laughs> That's because I'm always late. Tiempo Latino. Um, or like... Um, so people are frequently not on time. So if somebody is not on time, don't be stressed. It's very normal. People are frequently late. Bring a book, hang out, enjoy. I will say though, a rule of this group in our trip is that we're not going to be late. We are going to be on time because what's that famous phrase? Amy, do you remember it from our previous trip together? If you're on time, you're late. That's what I was thinking. I don't early, remember it from the last time. trip, but yes. Yeah. If you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. Yep. 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 <laughs> so very good. Yeah. That's a better way to travel, but uh, can we show up at the boats at six? <laughs> All right. We're going to do two more questions and then we're going to get into some Espanol, some frases de Espanol for you. All right. So which of these countries does Ecuador not border? Some geography for you. Peru, Chile, Colombia, or it borders all three. All right, we've got one vote for Chile, got one vote for Colombia, got a vote for Peru, Ooh, Peru, Chile. All right, we've got two Chile, one Colombia, two Peru. We need a tiebreaker. but we got a third for Chile. That is correct. It does not border Chile. So we have Bolivia, or sorry, we have Peru that's in between where Ecuador and uh, Chile are. Awesome. Okay, we're going to go on to a different quiz because um, I think quizzes are fun and it's the easiest way for us all to learn. All right, so I'm going to have you all, since we've got some mixed Spanish, we're going to go through some Spanish phrases just for fun. You don't have to unmute yourself if you would like to, you can. I'm just going to have you all repeat after me. All right, so we've got a couple of different phrases in Espanol. So this should also say buenos dias. So that's that's wrong. That should be a buenos dias. All right, so I'll have you all repeat after me. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Muy bien, okay. So what do you think buenos dias means? Buenos dias. Good day. Good day. Good day. Good morning. All <laughs> right. And our next one, we have buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Yeah. Okay. So we have buenos dias, buenas tardes. What do you think buenas tardes might mean? afternoon afternoon yeah good afternoon or good evening mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's a phrase that you could use in the evening time and then we have buenas noches buenas, buenas noches. noches okay buenas noches what do you think buenas noches might mean good night mm -hmm. awesome okay so which one of these do you think is probably not going to be used as a greeting Buenas noches. <laughs> yeah, buenas noches, because that's what you're going to say right before you go to bed. Okay? So that's a really good way to say goodnight to somebody. It uh, For the first one, Liz, it should be buenos dias. Buenos. Buenos. Buenas. Yeah, so buenos dias, buenas tardes, buenas noches. 
Yeah, muy bien. <clears throat> okay, so in Spanish, there's a lot of ways to ask how are you or how you're going. So this will put some of you all, I thought you meant nachos. <laughs> So this will put some of you all to the test, so those of you who have taken some Spanish classes, but I'll have you all repeat after me for them. All right. So the first one we have is, ¿Cómo estás? ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo estás? estás? Yeah. Okay. Second one we have is, ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Yeah. <laughs> um, the third one is, ¿Cómo eres? ¿Cómo eres? ¿Cómo eres? Como eres. Yeah, muy bien. And the fourth one is como va. Como va. Como va. Yeah. Does anyone know which one is not a way to ask someone how it's going or how they are? Does it be who va? Como va. We have a we have a guest for como va. Algo más? Eres. Como eres. Hmm. Where are my Spanish students? I saw you in there. <laughs> I'm going to tell your Spanish teacher on you. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So the correct answer is going to be como eres. So como eres is how we ask how, like what someone is like, maybe their personality, um, their characteristics. So you can use any of those to ask like como va is like an informal way to be like, how's it going? Like oye como va? Oye como va. Mm -mm. Meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> so now that you know how to ask someone how they are, how would you respond to that question? So take a second, read them, and then we'll repeat the one that we would like the best. So we have soy bien, soy bueno, estoy bien, or estoy bueno. <clears throat> They all sound correct to me. <laughs> right. Estoy Any bien. guesses? Estoy bien. Who said that one? Amy. 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 All right. Muy bien. So that is the correct answer for any of those like questions. Como va? Um, que tal? Eh, como estas? You can say estoy bien. So everyone try that. Estoy bien. Estoy bien. Estoy bien. Estoy bien. Perfecto. Muy bien. Okay, so now we have thank you and you're welcome. Okay, so which is one of the ways, first of all, how do you say thank you in, in Espanol? Gracias. 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 Okay, so how do you respond to that? De nada. Nada. De nada. De, na de nada. <laughs> De nada, which literally means of nothing. It was of nothing to me. De nada. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Oh, no. You're walking on the street and you accidentally bump into someone. <laughs> no te preocupes. You can have a couple options to say how you're sorry. Lo <laughs> Is lo siento the wrong one? Yeah. So is yeah. It? So not like I'm confused or something. No, that's I'm sorry. Disculpe. Yeah. So you can say lo siento. <laughs> However, this is kind of a fun thing. So lo siento is what we use when we're like apologizing for a really like sad or terrible thing. Oh. So it's better to yeah. actually use disculpe. Oh. Disculpe. Oh. Disculpe. Yeah. So can I say like, I'm. I'm lamentable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you really want to like dig into that, like you can, but you might get some weird bits. That's the, the very dramatic way to say I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm lamentable. Uh, yeah. I you plead can do the that. mercy of the court. <laughs> yeah. But I would, I would stick with disculpe or perdón. Either one. Disculpe or perdón. <laughs> Disculpe. Disculpe. All right. How do you introduce yourself? Do I have any brave volunteers? A couple options here. Where are Girl hey, Scouts hey. at? Who wants to volunteer? Oh, Mandy, here? what? Mandy, can you say that again? Nice and I said me amo, but then there's another one that says me amo es. Mm. So I guess. 
tricky. Second one. <laughs> mm. No, actually, actually, no. I don't think you do say the S. That is correct, Mandy. Muy bien. <laughs> so we are one? just going to say me llamo. Me llamo. Me llamo Anna. Y tú? Me llamo Luz. Muy bien. Alguien más? Me llamo. All right. And now how do I ask? How do I ask someone their name? You have two options. So looking at the first one, if I know that I can say, me llamo Anna, how might I ask that question? Como es tu nombre? Yeah. So como es tu nombre is actually one of the ones that we're not going to use. <laughs> that one's out, but... So you can use any of these. So let's practice this one because it's the most common. So I'll have you all repeat after me. Como te llamas? 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 And how do you answer it? <laughs> Me llamo Luz. Me llamo. All right. Muy bien. Okay. Um, we're coming to the end here. All right. So... You've just met somebody and you want to let them know you're pleased to have met them. Mm. Work on finding your Spanish name. Yeah, that's good. Mm. Um, our most common one, so I'll just highlight the most common one here, is mucho gusto. Mucho gusto. Yep. So, mucho gusto. Me llamo Ana. Yeah, mucho gusto. Um, me encanta conocerte. All right. Now, um, if you want to do a, a friendly non-drinking cheers, this is very common, <laughs> or when you want to like celebrate something, you're going to say salud, which is the same thing you're going to say for bless you. So somebody sneezes. <laughs> this is the same thing you'll say. So um, that's why I wanted to highlight it. Um, so this is how we say cheers. It's also how we say bless you. Does anyone know what this word actually means though? Salud. Salud. Yeah. Yeah. Salud means health. Salud means health. So when you salud or salud, you're, you're wishing for someone's good health. Salud. Salud. All right, and our last one. All right, we always need to know how to ask for help. Help! <laughs> Something horrible has happened. <laughs> Ayúdame! Ayúdame! Muy bien! Ayuda! Ayúdame! Ayuda! Yeah, awesome. So that's a really good one. Um, ayuda. Awesome. Well, I've gone over my time. So thanks for <laughs> um, anyone have any questions for Anna. It's a good opportunity to ask. Oh, our, we had a seven out of 10. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyone have any questions for Anna about how to say certain things when we're cruising around? I know one thing for me when I took Italian, it was a must for anybody that was going to Italy to ask where the bathroom <laughs> was. How can we ask where the bathroom mm -hmm. is? Assuming we're all going to have to go to the bathroom at some point in Ecuador. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Does anyone know? Donde está el baño? Yeah. Oh, muy bien. Um, muy bien, Amy. That all is right. 40 year old high school Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> So it if it's so wrong, important. <laughs> Mea culpa. <laughs> Muy bien. So, yep, to say, to ask, just to start, um, if you can't remember the whole phrase, the most important thing for you to remember is baño. 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 If yep. you can at least say baño, <laughs> then they will point you in the direction. <laughs> Jumping up and down and holding your hands like this doesn't work. No. <laughs> I will as well. Potty dance. Something to 
be mindful of is in some Spanish speaking countries, you might see um, WC or Lavatorio mm. instead. Um, but if you ask for donde está el baño, or you just say baño, somebody <laughs> will point you in the right direction. Great. All right. For your homework, I need everyone to uh, learn one helpful phrase in, in Espanol to tell us about next time, something we haven't learned this time around. Yeah, we in. For and example, I, send... I know how to say penguin in Spanish. Does anyone else know how to say penguin <laughs> in Spanish? No. Go ahead, no, Adrian. Either. How do you say penguin in Espanol? Como se dice penguin in Espanol? Penguino. Yay! Ah, <laughs> I wonder how you say crab. I don't know. Well, cangrejo. What is it? Cangrejo. Tan oh, cangrejo? Cangrejo. This is not what I expected it to be. <laughs> I love that. All right. So, fun. yeah, one helpful phrase, cangrejo. Why would I have never guessed that that would be the way to say either. crab in Spanish? Sounds like mm. kangaroo. <laughs> Yeah. I'm right. to say it, but I thought she asked about crap. <laughs> I will send Liz and Serafina some other resources for you all to take a look at. Um, and yeah, it was really lovely meeting everyone. Can everyone say mucho gusto, Anna? <laughs> mucho gusto, gracias, Anna. right? Gracias. 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 De nada. De nada. Excellent. Yay. Hasta Thanks luego. for intro to Spanish. <laughs> Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bueno, Hasta la pasta. Bueno, Hasta la pasta. Yes. You have to not make me the host because I think otherwise I end this meeting. Oh. I'll take back my hosting <laughs> duties. <laughs> yeah. Reclaim. Okay, great. All right. Ciao. Cool. Bye. Bye. Thank you. So <laughs> the next thing we're going to do for the last couple of minutes here in our meeting is I'm going to share some tips and tricks about health and safety because we are getting closer. It's 86 days to our tour today. Um, and so soon, I cannot believe how soon it's going to be upon us. Um, so we do have some things to do. So I'm going to share my screen here. And we're going to get going with some health and safety. And um, Serafina, can you mind the chat, please? Because I think I'm not going to be able to see. Yes, no, that's fine. Can you see, um, you know, remember before when I had that gray thing that was there? Is that is that there now? Can you no. see the gray thing? Okay, good. Knock on wood, it doesn't come back. <laughs> well, knock on wood. All right. So health well, and safety. I'm curious. Tonight's agenda, we're going to be talking about how to take care of ourselves and with regards to two specific oh, things that we may encounter while we're there. Um, we've got forms that we need to talk about. I'm going to give you a teaser for a packing list and then some final tips and takeaways. So if you have any questions as we go through these things, feel free to pop them in the chat or unmute yourself and we'll take care of them right away. So overcoming nervousness as Girl Scouts, being prepared is our best defense. So we're gonna do our best to learn about some of these things prior to our trip. Um, and we're going to prepare the best that we can so that we can handle them with grace. Uh, we might see some hammerhead sharks there. I'm super excited. So it's the cool dry season in the Galapagos. Um, the sort of cooler season starts in June-ish and runs to October. And this is when the Humboldt current is coming up um, through the Pacific Ocean and towards the Galapagos. And it's bringing all sorts of nutrient rich water um, to the Galapagos Islands. And lots of animals are coming here to the islands in order to eat um, from the Humboldt current. So um, we may see some hammerheads. I've heard that they've been seeing some whale sharks in the area, which is super cool. Um, definitely some penguins and flamingos and, and those types of things. So anyways, I always have to mention something about animals. Um, so there's that. It's not going to end. It's never going to end. It's going to continue until we <laughs> land our feet back in New York State after our trip. So here are two issues that we might encounter. And I've mentioned the sea, sea sickness before. Um, but in a previous meeting um, afterwards, someone brought up the fact that we might also encounter altitude sickness. So I thought I would just mention those two things today. Um, sea sickness may occur for us because although it is the cool, dry season, it also means that the, the ocean is a little bit choppier than it normally would be um, during the warmer season. So unfortunately, the boat ride might be pretty choppy. 
each boat ride can last be around two hours between the islands. Um, and our transfers typically take place around 5 a.m. So we have to wake up really, really early in order to catch these transfers from island to island. Um, and the reason is because the longer the day gets and the warmer it gets, the choppier the ocean gets. So the sooner we can get out onto the water and get into the boats and make our transfers, um, an, e an easier ride we're going to have. Oops, hold on. Back. Previous altitude sickness um, might occur because keto is the highest or the second highest, depending on who you talk to, capital in the world at 9,350 9, feet above sea level. Just to give you a perspective, our current sea level, if you're in the city of Syracuse or close by, is 381 feet above sea level. That is a huge difference. Um, and the reason that keto is the highest or the second highest is because Bolivia, the capital is like changing a lot. And sometimes it's La Paz and sometimes it's not really depends. Um, and that is higher depending on whether Bolivia is considering it their capital today or not. So anyways, uh, Denver is 55,280 feet. It's called the Mile High City for a reason. That's a mile right there. Um, so if you've ever been to Denver, um, we're going quite a bit higher than that. So I've never been to Denver. I've never been like in a mountain, I don't think. Maybe, I don't know if the Appalachians count because they're really short. Um, so we'll see what happens. But um, it's caused because uh, there's lower oxygen levels. The higher you get in altitude or elevation, um, the weirder the oxygen gets. So you might have, feel faint, have a headache, feel extra tired, that kind of thing. Um, but it's not insurmountable. So let's figure out what we can do about it. So the first thing we're going to talk about is motion sickness. So I get car sick in the car when it's raining, typically, and if I'm not driving. So I know that I do at least get motion sickness sometimes. I went on a whale watch in Boston on a boat, and it was super choppy, and I did not get sick. So I don't know what's going to happen on these, on these boat transfers. Um, if you haven't ever been on a boat before, you might get sick. You might not. Who knows? Here are some ways that we can ease it, though, if we do encounter motion sickness. I'm going to recommend that everyone bring um, a motion sickness medication. Uh, Dramamine is probably the most popular of or well-known of the medications, um, but you can get any of the generic Dramamine. Mm -hmm. Anuatin, I think, is one of them. There's one maybe called Bozine or Brozine. I don't know. There's a ton of them. Ask your doctor what they recommend. Um, if you've never taken this before, it might be a good idea to do a little test run just to see how you react to it. Dramamine is an antihistamine, which means it might make you a little bit sleepy or drowsy if you take it. Um, Dramamine does come in Dramamine for kids as well. So um, if you're under the age of 12, you might want to go that route. Um, but if you have questions, certainly ask your doctor what they would recommend. It, recommend. Um, I've also had patches that I put behind my ear before on planes, and they work pretty good as well. I think you can get them over the counter, but I know that they have prescription strength ones as well. If you know you get motion sickness, it's likely you're going to get sick on the boats. So prepare yourself um, ahead of time. Everybody that I've talked to in chat in the Facebook group for this trip has said pack them, um, even if you don't think you're going to need them, and pack extra um, because you never know when or how you're going to get sick. So we are flying and we're also taking boats. So keep that in mind. Um, you also can ease it yourself. Um, you can you know, sit in the middle of the boat. You can uh, sit towards the front of the bus when we're on the buses in Ecuador. Um, don't read. I always kind of fall into that trap of like, I might just look, you know, read something on my phone or watch a video or whatever. That makes me immediately sick. So don't do that. <laughs> uh, look ahead, right at the horizon, look through the windshield maybe and not out to the side because you're you know, whizzing past things. Um, when we get on the boats, there's an option to go into the boat, like sort of a covered area within the boat or outside, um, sort of on the bow of the boat. And you're going to want to definitely stay outside. Don't go inside the boat. When I was on the whale watch and the ocean was very choppy, everybody inside got sick. <laughs> Nobody on the outside got sick. It's that fresh air that's going to help you out. Um, and then of course we're going to help you through it too. You, if you get ill on this, uh, boat ride, you're not going to be the only one, trust me. So we're all in this <laughs> together and we're all going to do our best to make it work. Um, for altitude sickness, there's really not a whole lot that we can do about altitude sickness aside from get to a lower altitude, which we can't do because we're going to be in keto. 
So a couple of quick things that we can do about this is drink lots of water. And I'm going to be saying this, and your group leaders are going to be saying this throughout the trip. Water, 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 drink okay. the water, all the water. I also highly recommend something like liquid IV, which are those hydration packets. You can get them at Costco and you can get them at Target. Um, you can get Gatorade ones if you don't like the liquid IVs or whatever. Um, they really helped us out when we went to Italy and Greece where it was like 100 degrees every day and we were just sweating buckets and buckets and buckets every day. Uh, reduce our exercise. That's going to be tough because we're going to be on tour, um, but we're also not going to be running marathons. So there you go. We're going to try to sleep as best we can on the plane. And when we get to our hotels, um, I have a, I can pretty well guarantee you you're going to be exhausted when we get back to our hotels. So that's probably not going to be a problem. Um, the calories, this this part counts. Increase your potassium levels. Um, that helps. Uh, the easiest way to do that is bananas. Um, they have lots of potassium in them. Other foods do like beans and sweet potatoes and things like that, but they're a little less like plane friendly. <laughs> <laughs> I will not recommend uh -huh. you bringing a can of black beans onto a plane to eat. Um, so bananas are pretty portable and easily findable. So, you know, that might be a good choice. Um, I also read that we should be consuming more carbs, which I can totally get behind. Um, so <laughs> allegedly the research says eat some good carby meals, which if you know me, you know, I'm bored. I'm on board for that. Um, of course, protect yourself from the sun. And if you do get headaches from altitude sickness, they recommend Advil and specifically ibuprofen, not Tylenol or aspirin, but something in uh, the ibuprofen. Amy, I know you're like in the medical field, maybe like it's a non-steroidal or it's anti-inflammatory and something probably is more helpful than other medications. So there you go. My non-doctor recommendation there. So um, here are a couple of things that you can pack to help you personally stay healthy. Um, I'll highly recommend a personal first aid kit with Dramamine, Band-Aids, Moleskin, or Blister Pack. Um, I put my Chuckos on for the first time because I was like, hey, it's kind of sunny. I'm gonna wear some sandals. And I immediately got a blister on the bottom of my foot. I don't even think I walked anywhere. I just put them on my foot and my foot was like, no, and it rejected it. And I have a huge blister now. So you're definitely gonna wanna look into some Moleskin, um, which isn't made out of real mole, just FYI. Um, and like a blister, <laughs> Pack, kind of blister medic stuff. Um, Advil, Tylenol, liquid IV, and I would also recommend Imodium, um, which is for diarrhea. So if we're traveling to, to these places and we're kind of getting bumpy and, um, you know, we're drinking a ton of water, but maybe not so much water. And if you start to get dehydrated, um, diarrhea can set in. And that's really unpleasant to have on a trip. So I would pack some of that. Reusable water bottle, of course. Um, I would recommend something that's insulated so it stays cooler longer. Snacks, trail mix, fruit snacks, et cetera, whatever you like. Um, I just really like this picture of this ginger dude down here. Can you see him? Oh, I clicked on him. <laughs> so in my, previously I've eaten those Dramamine like ginger chews and they're okay, but gin gins, I'm going to order bulk. I think I'm going to get some bulk gin gins for us and hand them out at our last meeting in June. I don't, I don't care for ginger candy, but the ginger Dramamine chews definitely help. They taste weird, but they're effective because ginger is a natural way to like fix your upset stomach. So there you go. Insect repellent wipes. I have been reading that there are quite a few insects in the Galapagos Islands um, and the people don't really talk about them because you get distracted, but they're there, they're always there. So repellent wipes, not the spray or lotion because that's gonna take up your uh, liquid um, property that you don't wanna take up. Earphones or AirPods, music that's downloaded. So download some music to your device if you can so that you don't need Wi-Fi or the internet to listen to it. And this could help calm you on the boat um, as we're traveling. Just listen, get some sea music out there um, and to calm yourself down. And then of course, sunscreen. We're gonna pack so much sunscreen. It's gonna be like just extensions of our hands. Yeah, so right. we have some sunscreen conversation in the chat in case everyone isn't checking the chat. So uh, Michaela asked if we found a sunscreen that um, is safe for the reefs. And mm -hmm. then Mandy responded recommending Bear Republic. Mm -hmm. so it, it looks like this. If anybody, yep. and I've used this on my face and never broke out or anything. Like this is what I use on my face, but they also make I mean, you can use it on your body too, but if you want like, you know, yeah. not base stuff, they make it in regular too. Yeah. Um, I just bought some from Wegmans actually the other day. I don't know what I did with it. But do we um, know if it's good for the reef? 
Yep. It'll um, say reef safe yes. right on there. Yep. Yep. It does. It's it, this is reef friendly. Um, yeah. And anything that is reef safe should say reef. Yep. Uh, like awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of uh, sunblock makers nowadays are really trying to be more environmentally friendly. And, you know, most, most sunblocks that you're going to encounter at least have a reef friendly um, on it, you know, so there you go. Um, I like the ones that you can roll on. There's like the roll on or the like stick sunscreens that are like deodorant sticks. Um, so I'll be packing one per day. And if anyone needs anything, so there you go. Um, good. So health and safety forms. We do have some forms that we want to fill out. Um, they're actually required. So <laughs> uh, you're going to fill them out. So there's a couple here that I'm listing and they're not attached obviously to this PowerPoint, um, but they're your typical like forms that you, you generally fill out. So the Galapagos Code of Conduct, I'm gonna send this to you. I'm gonna send all of these to you via email and a follow-up after this meeting. Um, that Code of Conduct is basically just the Girl Scout law, promise and law, essentially. We're gonna respect the places that we're going, the people that are there, um, keep ourselves neat and clean. We're not gonna you know, litter and leave garbage all over the place. Um, no alcohol consumption on this trip, that's part of it as well. No smoking, no vaping, um, all of those things. And a couple of reasons why you could be sent home. It's also gonna talk a little bit about what happens if you do break the rules and end up um, being asked to leave the trip, which can happen um, based on your conduct. So but I know you all are good Girl Scouts and we're not going to have a problem with this. So read through that. If you have questions about it, we can talk about it at the beginning of our next meeting as well. I also have a form for medication for travel. Um, if you are bringing medications, um, this is sort of going to get treated like a troop trip someplace. Um, and most of you are old enough and or are traveling with an adult. So you're going to keep your own medication. Um, I can collect controlled substances if you choose for me to hold on to them. Um, but I'm really going to uh, have you all keep your own medications. This medication for travel form is going to give permission for you to self-medicate. Um, of course, if you have something like an EpiPen for allergies um, and need assistance with that, we are going to help you. We're, gonna, we're trained in that. So we can help you with EpiPens and, and such. Um, but this one is basically to keep track of the medications that you'll need um, and gives permission for you to self-administer. Um, I would also try to bring maybe, don't bring your entire medication. I'll recommend that. Don't bring your whole thing. Um, bring enough for probably two weeks, I would say. How long are we gone? Eight days? I would bring twice as much as you would need. So if we're going for eight days, just plan ahead just in case you never know. Bring an extra eight days of medication if you can. Um, on the trip in case we encounter delays or whatever. Um, traveler health and medical profile. This is actually from the EF website. Um, so it's ed an editable PDF and it just asks basic questions. Um, the medication part is uh, redundant with the medication for travel form. So you don't have to fill it out twice if you don't want to. And then lastly, a traveler info form. And these are just a few quick questions about you. Um, for the chaperone group, basically like, do you know how to swim? Have you flown before? <laughs> do you have any issues that we wanna make sure that we know about um, while we're traveling, that kind of thing, just so that we have a better idea of, of who you are um, and possibly how we can help you if we encounter some bumps along the road. Please make sure you tell me about any dietary or health restrictions. Um, if you need something specific, like if you have a CPAP machine, and you need to have access to electricity, that might be important. I think we do have access to electricity most of the time on this trip though. Um, and especially if you have food allergies, for example, if you're allergic to shellfish, that might be something that we will want to know considering that we're going to a place that probably I imagine eats a lot of shellfish. Um, so make sure if it sounds like it could make a difference to your health and safety on the trip, just let us know. Um, we're not gonna tell anyone else, this is really just for our I don't know, our group leaderness. That's not a word. Anyways, questions? Sounded good. <laughs> yeah, it does sound good. It's getting towards the end here. This is where I get a little loopy. <laughs> so just a couple of quick things on traveling safety. Um, we keep your passport on you at all times. Mm -hmm. I know that some group leaders um, don't require this. I do. Um, you can get you can get stopped at any time. 
anywhere by any authority in countries that we travel to who will ask you where you're from and where's your identification. Um, plus, you always know where it is. I typically keep mine in a sling bag on my body. Um, and because of who I am, I like to touch it and just make sure that it's in there. I want to know it's there um, because we are not going to lose our passports on this trip. You, I'm going to be purchasing a waterproof pouch to keep my passport and my phone in um, and possibly... I don't know what else I'm traveling with, whatever. Um, so maybe look into that on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. You can get a you can get one for like six bucks on Amazon. Um, they're pretty pretty easy to get. Keep your money wallet in a pouch or pocket that's not easily accessible. Um, so you know we want to make sure you keep that close, especially in Ecuador and Quito while we're there. We're gonna travel in groups at all times. Um, we're gonna follow the rule of three. So no less than three people should be traveling together anywhere at any time. Um, and of course, stay with your assigned group. There are park rules. I'm going to pop them up briefly, but I'm going to send you a link to them. Um, there are specific rules that we have to follow while in the Galapagos National Park. 97% um, of the islands, I believe it's 97%, are national park. Um, and so these rules apply across the board. Do not drink the tap water. Buy bottled water. Please don't drink the tap water. <laughs> Let's not test this out. Um, and I'll even go further still and say that maybe even use your bottled water when you're brushing your teeth. So, you know, when you dip your toothbrush in there, just use use bottled water and then brush your teeth and use that to rinse out as well. Don't test this on our eight day trip <laughs> to the Galapagos. <laughs> you will regret it. Um, and then lastly, in Quito, uh, be just be aware of overly friendly people. Um, I'm not certain exactly what the culture of Ecuador is, but I've read that that people are generally friendly. However, you always want to make sure that if you know people are trying to give you something or you know, talk to you or touch you on the arm or, you know, put put their arms around you. Um, just be aware that that might be a way to separate you from important things like your passport or money or the group. Um, so we're just going to keep our heads on a swivel when we're in big groups in large cities. That's a good safety tip for really traveling anywhere. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the little bags I talked about. Uh, these ones, I think, were 12 bucks, and I just copied and pasted from Amazon. They look like they're pretty decent. There's ones that are, like, phone. Um, they're, like, phone friendly, where you can touch them and, like, take pictures and use your phone through them, that sort of thing. Um, you should have a working cell phone with an international plan. This is how we're going to be able to contact you while you're in a group. If you get separated from the group, um, it's imperative that you have a working cell phone with an international plan. If you get separated, you will have no way to contact us so that we can find you if you don't have a working phone. Um, I would recommend taking a picture of your passport and just saving it in your photos on your phone so that you have it just in case. Um, and then I encountered this in Japan, which I didn't realize at the time was important. If your kiddo is traveling by themselves, make sure you take off the time restrictions or the child protective. Um, like a lot of the kids' phones went off and it was 3 a.m. here and it was like 7 p.m. the next day in Japan or whatever. And their phones didn't work because the the um, time limit was on them and we just didn't realize with the time change. So if you have anything like that on your phone, just make sure that you remove it or adjust it. The Galapagos is two hours behind us. Is that right? Yeah, two hours behind us. Um, it's 5.50 right now. So just make sure that you keep that in your brain when you're working on your phone. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the park rules. So this is going to be really hard for me, but you're not allowed to touch the wildlife at all. In fact, we're maintaining, uh, you know, six foot, um, if we can, six feet um, from any wildlife, you no know, feeding of the wildlife. When we get to the Galapagos, we are going to need to um, go through quarantine. They're going to check our bags to make sure that we're not bringing um, seeds and vegetations and things like that into the park. Um, and we're going to quarantine. I don't know if we have to do like bleach dips or anything like that, but we'll find out when we get there. Um, but a lot of these animals don't live anywhere else in the world. Um, and we certainly don't want to be introducing new foods to them, new gross people, hands on them and that sort of thing. Um, and they also mostly all have sharp teeth. So we're going to not touch them and stay away from them as much as we can. Um, I'll send this link to you so you can read it, but it's very, very straightforward. We're going to practice leave no trace. You know, we're not taking any products. I know I joked about taking a rock because I always take a rock. I will not be taking a rock. Nope, nope, nope. Um, so we're, we just want to be super careful um, on this archipelago because it's 
ecologically important and we want to follow all of the rules. So there you go. Um, all right, so here's some helpful tips and takeaways. Talk to your doctor about motion sickness. Um, if you should take it, um, sometimes medications have side effects or other things that they interact with other medications. If you're on medications, that sort of thing, just give a shout out, call the nurse and say, hey, I'm thinking about taking Gramamine. Is there a problem with that? Um, start working on your paperwork. All of the paperworks are due by June 9th um, at Camp Hoover. You can give them to me in person if you wish, or you can scan them and email them to me. You can mail them to me physically at the office, whatever you prefer. Make sure your cell phone has an international plan. We will likely be communicating with the WhatsApp app um, because it's easy to use. And um, most of our tour guides in other countries use the WhatsApp app. So think about downloading that and getting familiar with it. And then think about start packing. Think, Start thinking about packing. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna send this link to you. This is a comprehensive packing list of things that you will need. Remember, it's gonna be cool there. I run a little bit cold. I get cold like at night um, and it's going to be cooler in keto. So I'm definitely gonna re recommend packing like pants and a sweater and or long sleeve shirts. Um, and especially if you can, if you are looking into it, um, SPF shirts, clothing with SPF in them so that when you're wearing them on the islands, um, they can double for warm clothing, but also sunproof clothing. So I'm going to send this along to you. Um, I found it to be pretty comprehensive and that's that. Here's a couple of tips. Um, if you are thinking about packing now, <laughs> here's some good tips for you. Um, you can pack in advance, roll your clothes, use Ziploc bags. Um, these are on that website as well. Just some tips and tricks. Um, an important one to know, I think, on this one is to pack casual. Um, I can tell you that we're definitely not going to any sort of fancy restaurant or a cocktail party or your Aunt Mildred's wedding while we're here in the Galapagos Islands. Just pack for comfort. You don't need to look fancy. You don't need to, you know, wear espadrilles. Just wear comfortable clothing. Um, and don't pack anything that you don't want to lose, honestly. Um, so I know this says like, leave your wedding ring at home. If you have a favorite necklace, if you have your favorite pair of earrings that you just love, um, I would recommend just not bringing them. In fact, you know, if you can get away without wearing jewelry at all, I probably would, especially when you're snorkeling. Sometimes animals like that delightful sea lion on the side there are attracted to shiny things. So it might be best to just not wear them at all. <laughs> I think he was messing with me, but I once went snorkeling in Key West and I had a necklace on. And I remember the guy in the boat was like, oh, the barracudas are going to love you. And I was like, what? <laughs> because they were apparently they're attracted to the shiny. It's like it's the fishing lure, mm. I guess, if you think about it. Right. Like if you're wearing a necklace or something and it's in the water. Right. Anyways, are there barracudas in the Galapagos? Hmm. I'm going to have to research this. <laughs> Anyways, so there you go. That's it. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Did I miss anything in the chat? Uh, ooh, we did get one that. question that I believe I answered by going back to our trip itinerary, but you do have the most up-to-date information. We had a question about, will we be needing our own money for food like lunch, breakfast, dinner? And I responded with the provided meals being breakfast and dinner daily and lunch on days three through six. Yep, that's right. So you will need your own money for lunch. Um, I think the glove, I think there are like more lunches that are provided on this trip than some other trips. Um, so lunch on most days is on our own, but I feel like once we're on the islands and keto, definitely. Um, I think when we're in the Galapagos, there may be some lunches that are included as well because there's just limited places to get food. Um, so I'll have more information about that though, um, as we get a little bit closer and I know who our tour director is because they'll be able to tell us exactly, um, what we need. So yeah, not successful. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm struggling. I think with the cold, I, my brain has been telling me like, you're going to the, this tropical place and it's going to be super warm there. Um, but it's not. And then my brain is like struggling with that a little bit. So. And everyone who thinks we're going is like, ooh, it's going to be so warm there. Palm trees and coconuts. No. But I don't <laughs> think that's real. <laughs> so um, as much as I don't want to pack cold weather clothing, <laughs> I think it's going to be important to do so. So anyways. layers. Yeah layers. layers. yeah, 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 yeah. Layers, definitely. Any other questions or comments uh, that you want to talk about before we we call it a night here? So it's almost time. Got another two or three minutes. 
Liz, it might be in the packing list, but do they recommend like for swimming? Like, is the water going to be super cold or? So the water is going to be this around the same temperature as the air, okay. which is good. Um, but the air temperature is going to be between 73 and 77 ish. Um, so it's not going to be like your, you know, warm, like Gulf of Mexico, you know, Key West kind of water. Uh, it's going to be a little chillier. So um, keep that in mind. I recommend uh, bringing a couple of bathing suits if you can. Um, rash guards, of course, for, you know, SPF proof. Um, and then towels. Don't forget that we do have to pack towels. Um, so as I think I mentioned before, I recommend those sand cloud ones, the ones that are really thin that you can roll up um, and shove in your stuff. But I would say two or three towels might be a good idea as well, because we're going to be snorkeling. We're snorkeling. We're going to be on the beach. We are going to be going in the ocean. Um, and so having a towel or two would be great. Um, it's drier. It's a little bit drier in the islands at this time. So things might dry more quickly than they normally do, but, um, really depending on the humidity, um, it might take a while for wet clothing to dry. I would also probably recommend packing a, um, like a wet bag for wet clothing that will keep it separate from your dry clothing. Um, you can even just pack like a big gallon size Ziploc baggie for it, or a couple of them I would recommend, um, just so that the rest of your stuff doesn't get wet too. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about packing at the in-person meeting on June 9th. Do you know if in Ecuador, our phone chargers and anything we might plug into the wall, is that the um, same outlet as here? Or yep. is it like Europe where we need the converter? Okay. No, nope, you don't need a converter. They're the same outlets as here. And excitingly for us, uh, the currency is the U.S. dollar. So we don't have to exchange money either. Although I did read that a lot of places are cash only um, and it's better to work in small bills. So start saving up your dollar bills, y'all, now so that um, when we get a little bit closer, especially in the islands, when we're in the Galapagos and you want to purchase snacks and things like that, um, can't be rolling up with a $50 bill because I don't know if that's going <laughs> to, I don't know how well that's going to be received. Um, so the smaller the bills, the better. Um, and then we'll talk about, we've been selling a lot of cookies. Um, and so I think I may be able to alleviate um, girl tips. Um, and I'll have a little bit more information about that as we get closer. I'm sorry, adults, you're on the hook still for tip money because um, you don't sell cookies. So the girls, though, I'll have updated information about tip money as we get a little bit closer. For adults, um, plan on $100 right now um, for tip money. And I'll collect that at the June 9th meeting as well. Is that, is that enough money for all the tips for all the people for the whole tour? A hundred dollars? Yep. Okay. Yes, um, it should be. I'll double check it. Um, so I think that we typically, it's usually they recommend $10 per person per day. Our trip is eight days. Um, and so it gives us a little bit of a buffer on that one. Um, the majority of the money will be going to our tour director um and then we'll be parsing out to like the water taxi people and the bus driver and things like that along the way so they've got a whole system a whole like mathematical equation that i use in, to get tipping under control so oh my gosh you can ask adrian about that she worked with the penguins at the zoo in syracuse for quite a number of years and she'll be more than happy to tell you why you should not buy a penguin <laughs> I'll show Most you of it, stars. I think, probably has to do with the projectile poop that smells like fish, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions, comments, concerns? 86 days. It's awesome. I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be here in no time. Um, I am getting our lunch catered by Hope Cafe, by the way, um, on June 9th. So I'm providing lunch. Um, but if you have any allergies, let me know. Um, in my talk with the person, his name is Matt. Um, he was also asking me like spicy, not spicy, a little spicy, <laughs> no spicy. I said, whatever is closest to the food that we're going to be eating in Ecuador would be delightful. So, <laughs> But for us babies in the crowd, myself included, maybe a little like small spice. Adrian mm -hmm. likes very much spice. I so <laughs> who else? Mandy, it's Are you guys spicy or no spicy? No spice. No spice. 
I guess it depends. I can have I a can, little bit I of can, spice, but I can go moderate. I can. All right, put in the chat: spice or no spice. <laughs> Amy is a lightweight on the spice. I love that. Yeah, I see. I don't. I can't eat a chicken wing. Where if I eat the chicken wing, I can't taste anything else. So, oh, there we go. Spice. Oh, that was a big spice. That was like a bolded spice. No shame. <laughs> I like a good spice. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Someday my husband will have to tell you about the hot sauce I bought him for Christmas, where he like lost all of his senses. No, <laughs> it was amazing. apparently no, even for him it was bad. <laughs> mm -mm. Mild. Oh, we have a pretty good. We got, like, we got a mix here. Okay, we'll we'll go with some moderate spice. So we'll work it out. Anyways, but if you have any food allergies or any food, um, not allergies, but like food proclivities no what's the word i'm looking for if you got any <laughs> weird food stuff going on let me know <laughs> so i can make sure that you have um something to eat um and then i will also be asking you just to respond to my email and or rsvp with how many people you're bringing so i can make sure that we have enough food as well so. aversions no i don't care about aversions you're gonna try it <laughs> much like we're all eating guinea pigs on this trip, you are going to try it and it's going to be a delight and you're going to find something new and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> I'm not a guinea pig, no matter what you say. <laughs> just a nibble, just a little nibble. No, no nibble? Nope. <laughs> all right. <laughs> they call them, what do they call them over there? Cavies, cuyas, they call, something. They anyway. call them cavies, but... Heavy is a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah. So was, they call it cooey also, which cooey, is, which yeah, is guinea a pig. Cooey. cooey. Yeah. But, but, if it's nice. like a chicken wing or a frog leg, I'm in. I don't need it to be like on a skewer. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> which no I think is what it is. But... <laughs> guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Okay. We're going off the rails here, folks. It's 8.03. So thank you very much for joining us. Look for my follow-up email with all the links and forms attached. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to us. Our next meeting is on May 6th, Monday, May 6th at 7 p.m. This is where Mara is coming, and she just came back from this very tour. She's been to Ecuador. She's been to the Galapagos Islands. So she's going to give us a little bit of an insider view on what is going to happen on our tour. So I will talk to you all soon. Have a great night and 86 days, baby. <laughs> Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Did you Buenas set up a time noches. for the meeting, the chaperone meeting? Oh, no, I didn't. I did not. So, chaperones, if you want to stay on the line afterwards, stay on the line, group leaders, and let's chat about that. Chaperone That's party. Chaperone party. <laughs> Recording.